I'm Insomniac and this is the Pagani Design PD1649. You feel the vibe. vibe. Alright all, welcome back to Should I Time This? Getting into another watch review, another Pagani Design watch review. A lot of this stuff coming through here lately and a lot of it surprising me. In a good way or a bad way, well, you're gonna have to watch the review to find out. So as I often have to do with Pagani Design watches, this way I don't have to spend an entire video making comparisons between this Pagani Design watch and whatever it's a homage to. We'll just get this out of the way right now. Uh, this is a homage to a Tag Heuer Autavia. I did not memorize that reference number. WBE5191. FC8276. But anyway, I'll slap a picture of it right here on screen. That's what this is a version of. Obviously, you can clearly see it. Are they absolutely identical aesthetically? No, but at a glance, they're pretty damn close. Anyway, that's it for that. And otherwise, we're just gonna review the watch as it is. Before we do that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I have a lot of new watch reviews coming up soon. Three more of which were supplied by the person I wanna give a shout out for sending this in. That was Anthony, thank you very much. Okay, let's get into the watch. The case on this watch is almost amazing. I'm actually really impressed with this case, other than one thing that I'll get to towards the end of the section. The case is made of stainless steel, but it's finished in this gold tone that doesn't look like cheesy fake gold, but rather like a nice copper. Uh, the sides of the case and tops of the lugs are brushed, but if you look at the area where the tops of the lugs meet the sides of the case, you'll see a nice polished finish, but that's not just a flat polished surface to add a bit of separation. That's actually a recessed bevel machined into the case. A really nice detail for a watch in this price range. Case back is stainless steel, nicely machined, and has a fairly large exhibition window so you can see the Seiko NH35A automatic movement in action. The crown is nice and large, not overly huge though. It's proportionate to the case. The Pagani design logo is embossed into the face of the crown and polished to stand out. The knurling on the crown is nice and grippy, which makes winding or setting the watch nice and easy. Lastly, we have the one letdown of this case, and that's the bezel. Aesthetically, I have no complaints. It looks great with this case and the watch overall, and the coin edge slotting on the outside of the bezel has a fairly good grip to it. But it's possibly the cheapest feeling and sounding bezel that I've ever turned. It turns way too easily. It sometimes feels like it skips teeth when you're turning it, and there's a ton of wiggle and play in the mechanism. Good news here is I doubt too many people would actually use the bezel on a watch this cheap for anything important, so it probably won't be a big deal for you. Other than the bezel though, this case is a lot nicer than it even should be for this amount of money. If you've seen the dial on the Tag Heuer Octavia that I mentioned earlier in this video, you've seen this dial already, minus two large differences. The date window on this watch is at 3 o'clock rather than 6 o'clock, and Pagani Design uses partially skeletonized hands rather than being fully loom filled. Otherwise, at a glance, they're the same dials. And calm down, watch fans. No, I'm not saying that in terms of finish or quality, they're identical. I'm talking about at a glance. Anyway, starting at the outermost edge, you have a ladder style minute track printed on a super thin chapter ring. Honestly, it's more or less just a subtle and useless detail more than it's a minute track because A, you can barely see it depending on how you're looking at the watch because the tall crystal tends to hide and distort it, and B, you have a large minute track on the bezel which isn't too far away, so really that minuscule minute track is fairly unnecessary. Below that track, you have this black ring broken up by these nice polished applied angular hour markers which coincide with a large and super legible set of numerals for the hours applied right on the dial. The base of the dial is a nicely textured, very subtle brown burst, which is basically the same hue for most of the surface area, but you can see it starts to get darker towards the outermost edge of the dial. Printed on the dial under 12, you have the Pagani design logo and text, as well as automatic and the water resistance info printed on the dial above the six. There's a thin white border around the date window at three o'clock, and this window replaces the three numeral that would have been there in its place, which I actually like. Pagani Design uses a black numeral on a white disc, which is one of the other small differences I forgot to mention between this and the Octavia it's modeled after. The actual Octavia uses a white numeral on a black disc, which looks a lot better on the style. Uh, this white date disc is a bit of an eyesore in my opinion. Last but not least we have the hands, done in a polished gold tone that matches the hour markers and the case really well. As mentioned earlier, the hour and minute hands are partially skeletonized in the lower halves, 
while the upper halves have loom filling. There's also a triangle of loom filling the second hand as well. All three hands look great aesthetically on this dial, and they're all long, perfect lengths for this dial size. The only complication on this watch is the date window at 3 o'clock. As mentioned in the dial section, aesthetically the whole black numeral on a white disc thing doesn't match the dial well, but it won't subtract points here for aesthetics. It's a large date window that's easy to read at a quick glance. It's a useful complication and it works well, so no issues here. All of the hour numerals in all three hands have loom filling, and despite how large the surface area is for all the loom fillings, minus the second hand, the loom really isn't that good. It all glows evenly, but this is the loom with a full direct charge. It's fairly dull and doesn't last very long, and the loom doesn't pick up a really good charge from standard indoor light, so really you'd have to rely on the sun or a direct loom charge with a high-powered light source to get the loom to shine this much. So this watch has loom, but it's not very good. Time at a glance on this watch is very good. There's no clutter on this dial, the layout is simple, the hands are nice and long with definitive tips to show you where they're pointing, and even in lower light situations, the contrast between the loom fillings and the brown dial make it so that you can still get a good read of the time. If it had a usable set of minute indices actually on the dial itself, it would actually get a perfect score in this section. The strap on this watch is excellent. Not only does it look great with this watch, but it's nicer than it should be for what this watch costs. It's a worn looking brown leather with white contrast stitching, and the worn look that they went with here is excellent. It actually looks like a brown leather strap that just got worn for a long time. The buckle is a nice shape, it has the Pagani design logo engraved into it, and it matches the case perfectly. The strap has a decent thickness to it, it feels comfortable on the wrist, and the free loops hold the excess strap in place throughout the day without having to constantly readjust them. It's just a nice strap. Last but not least, we have value. You might have noticed that the title of this review is This Is Getting Ridiculous. Well, that's because this is the third Pagani design watch that I've reviewed, and the prices they're asking for watches of this quality is, well, ridiculous. Yes, they're Chinese made, and no, obviously the quality of a Pagani design watch doesn't rival the brands that they're paying homage to. But this watch, for example, has a solid build quality, handsome aesthetics, a Seiko automatic movement. It even has a nice strap, and right now this watch, brand new on the Pagani design website, is $84.99. Really, there are only two questions you'd need to ask yourself to figure out whether or not you want to buy one of these. Number one, and I bring this up a lot in pieces that are homage pieces, is do you mind wearing a replica? I know a lot of people that watch this channel don't like that word, but I mean, it is what it is. Do you mind wearing a replica of, in this case, a Tag Heuer or Octavia? And number two, does the bezel action of a watch matter to you? And with this particular style of watch, I don't think it should matter very much, but that was the only cheap thing I could really find with this watch. If you're not gonna use the bezel all that much and you don't mind wearing a homage piece, then for $84.99, uh, this watch is an excellent value. Anyway, another big shout out to Anthony for sending this in. There are three more watches coming up for review that Anthony also sent in. If you have any watches you want to see reviewed on the channel, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I'll let you know where to send the watches. They'll be reviewed, insured, and sent back. And that's it. Leave comments, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. If you have one of these, of course, let me know what you think of it. And I'll see you all in the next review. Feel the